Hello everybody, I hope your week is going well. I'm your host, Sil Hamilton, and welcome to the introductory module for Generative AI for Journalists, Discovering What Data Can Do. Uh, you've heard a little bit about the course and its structure in both the promotional video and the welcome message, but I thought that I would record an additional video just to walk those of you through uh, installing the prerequisite software for the course. So if you want, you can get a head start with what we'll be doing throughout the next four weeks. So very first thing that I hope you should be doing is going to huggingface.co. Hugging Face will be featured heavily in this course, both because their software framework, their series of libraries for the Python programming language are pretty much de facto standard for interacting with local language models, but also because they've developed a wonderful website full of all sorts of different people uploading language models, uploading different kinds of tools for working with data. And it's a community, really. So if you want to get started with learning how language models work, learning how generative AI works, and learning how to start interacting with other people so that you can learn by example, or just uh, if you want your documentation so you can go through it yourself, Hugging Face is like a one-stop solution to figuring it all out. And we'll even be having a Hugging Face employee later in the course give a conversation with me about how to host uh, modules on their website. So without further ado, I'm going to log in, or if you've not made an account yet or ever on Hugging Face, be sure to click sign up and just go through their instructions. So anyway, I'm going to log in into my personal Hugging Face account and bang, I will be landing on their front page. And Hugging Face is really a tremendous website for a number of reasons, not least because they are a full spectrum sort of website. So you've got models, data sets where you can find different interesting tidbits of data. I did a research project a few years ago using uh, articles written by the CBC. I was trying to measure how their articles changed, how their editorial stance changed through the beginning of the pandemic. I got their data through a website very similar to Hugging Face. Uh, spaces, which I'll introduce in just a second. Documentation, solutions if you're representing a company or your newsroom would like to get a sense of how to do private generative AI pipelines and such uh, and solutions, and then pricing, which you don't have to worry about because Hugging Face, generally speaking, is free for the end user, including hosting your own generative AI models on their website. So uh, in terms of models, there are a ton that are hosted on Hugging Face. They've got about 400,000 models, all hosted uh, by Hugging Face, uploaded by random individuals. Some of them like OpenAI, Facebook, Google, Amazon, all the major generative AI research companies and companies coming out with a generative AI solutions nowadays in some way host material on Hugging Face. And that's because Hugging Face is really the bread and butter backbone of the artificial intelligence community. It's open source, they're very honest, it's transparent, and they made a really excellent website for cataloging, annotating, and just plain sharing cool models with each other. So uh, we can sort by trending and we can see that uh, the recent model coming from that Chinese startup, ONA.AI is popular right now, Yi 34 billion. You can see OpenAI has Whisper on here. Uh, OpenChat recently up uploaded a new model, OpenChat 3.5, which is quite decent. I've been playing around with it. And you've got other language models uploaded by different research communities. You can sort by different kinds of models on the website. So if you want a generative AI model fit for feature extraction, text to image, image to text, question answering, document question answering, working with natural language processing, which will feature heavily in this course. And if you've never heard of the term, natural language processing just refers to using computers to analyze textual documents like Word docs or PowerPoint slides, uh, working with audio, and so on. And to download any of these models, and we'll click on the first one here, we can see that they have information on how to host the model for ourselves. And you can either do that through Hugging Face, or as I'll show in the first week, you can download these models onto your own computer. They have information about the performance of the model, which if you're heavily into AI matters a lot these days because like uh, GPT-4, for example, was in the 96th percentile on the LSAT, and uh, generally speaking, they've been passing literacy tests. And if you want to learn how to use the model, they've got a button here uh, for loading Hugging Face's own Python library 
for running the model locally, which again will show in, I think, not the first module, sorry, the second week. Anyway, if you want to learn how to run models locally and get a head start before the class begins in earnest, uh, click on documentation. So Hugging Face got their start with Transformers, which is a Python library. Uh, Python is a programming language, which I'll give a brief introduction to in this course. You don't need to know very much because Python is a programming language that was designed with a uh, natural language in mind. So if you know a little bit of English, you can program in Python. It's quite simple. Especially because I'll be giving demonstrations and hands-on tutorials. Uh, and so Transformers, anyway, lets you easily download and train state-of-the-art pre-trained models. And so uh, they've got plenty of guides on here, tutorials and so on. But if you want to know how to run any sort of language model on your own device, not only will I be teaching you, but you can also learn from Hugging Face. So be sure to check out their documentation. And at the very end of the course, the last week, we'll be talking about Spaces, which lets you host generative AI models directly on Hugging Face and share them with other people. And lots of people have things up on Hugging Face and you've got demonstrations of face recognition pipelines, Whisper, uh, Pro Painter. Some of these are interesting. You've got Whisper again, Stable Diffusion. You have models for making music and uh, really consistent generated images and uh, models for generating illusions and so on and so on. And uh, so Hugging Face really is where everything happens. So it's really important to make an account. Second of all, I'll be showing you how to download JupyterLab, which lets you run Python on your computer very easily and lets you get set up with the proper libraries and tools you'll be needing to run language models and other generative AI models on your own computer. So I've provided the link in this week's material. And if you go to that link, you'll, be, uh, you'll find yourself on this page, JupyterLab, JupyterLab Desktop on GitHub. And when you hit that page, all you need to do is scroll down to the part of the readme that says installation. And depending on which kind of computer you're running, so if you're running a MacBook, you'll pick either of these two. If you're running a MacBook that was released after 2020, you'll pick macOS Apple Silicon Installer. If you're running a MacBook that's older than uh, any laptop released in 2020, you'll pick macOS Intel Installer. And if you're running Windows, you'll press Windows Installer. I'm running on a Mac OS Apple Silicon installer, so I'm gonna press that, and it's going to start downloading. Okay, and now that I've downloaded JupyterLab to my computer, I'm going to double click, if you're on Mac, uh, the file that you get, and it will ask you to move jupyterlab.app into the applications folder. So I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and do just that. And now that I've installed JupyterLab, that's all you have to do, I'm just going to open it up. It will ask me if uh, I really want to open it because it was a file downloaded from the internet. I'm going to say, sure, yes, of course, I need this for my course I just paid money for, and I'm going to boot JupyterLab open. And at first, you'll be hit with this window. And it's not clear exactly what you can do with this window, but uh, starting from the second week onwards, I'm going to be giving tutorials all through JupyterLab. And so it's really in your best interest to get a sense of what the application is like first. So when you land, what you're going to do, and you'll probably be doing this every single time you open JupyterLab, is you're going to hit new notebook. And this is really all what JupyterLab is about. So JupyterLab lets you run Python inside a very controlled environment, and you can do everything inside this environment, and it will also download Python for you. So JupyterLab, I can type in Python like this, like hello world, and I can hit go, and it will run my code that I run, that I type in, and here it's printing back hello world, and I can adjust my code, and I can make that a period instead of an exclamation point, and I can press run again, and it will say hello world with a period. So that might be a little bit confusing, but the point is that, and I'll be providing notebooks for you, you can write all of your code in this environment and you can save this environment, you can save the notebook, you can save the notebook as something, and you can share your notebooks with other people. So what that means is that I can download my notebook to my computer and I can give you that notebook. 
and then you can open the notebook and you'll have Python code that I've written sitting on your computer. And you'll have Python code, you'll have Python code that I've written sitting on your computer. And when I've done that, all you'll be able to do is run the code. And so let me give you an example of that right now. Okay, so I've downloaded this notebook from OpenAI. And it's a guide on how to build a tool using agent with Langchain. You've got text describing how to do it. You've got text explaining what's happening. And you've got code intermixed with the text. And this is a form of programming called literate programming. Uh, literate programming because it's very word heavy and it's telling you exactly what the code does. And you can choose to run the code if you want, or you can choose not to. And so this code might look very dense and complex at first, but I promise you that it's quite simple. And with the notebooks that I'll be giving you, you'll be able to run the code that I've prepared. And you'll be able to see precisely and learn by doing examples of using generative AI in the newsroom. So uh, make sure you download Jupyter Lab after you've watched this video. Give it a whirl, try it out. Let me know if it's working. If it isn't, I'm available in the forums. And I wish you the best of luck with the introductory module. Have a good day, everybody.